Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Baptist Church. Yeah, woohoo, yeah. <laughs> I have a few announcements to make this morning. Uh, inside your bulletin, you will find a sheet that's a ministry focus feedback form. And Pastor John would like for you to look it over this next week and kind of think about some things, some direction that you would like to see the church go. There's a little announcement in your bulletin about it. But some things that you think maybe list the top five things of what you would like to see at First Baptist. He's trying to get kind of a feel for what we would like to have done here so he knows how to work with us. Um, also, the church office is going to be closed for Thanksgiving, Thursday and Friday. Um, so just an observance of that. Uh, there's a Christmas decorating uh, activity going to be happening next Saturday on the 25th. It'll be at 2 o'clock, and there's going to be popcorn and hot chocolate and lots of decorating going on, getting the church all festive for the season. Um, the December the 3rd, uh, during this uh, Sunday morning service will be the installation service for Pastor John. There will be a luncheon after that, no Sunday school that week. So you can kind of check the details on that one. Um, also, uh, if the, for the newsletter, if you have any articles or pictures or other information for the December newsletter, please get that to Lynn by Monday, November the 27th. Um, and if you haven't had a copy of that newsletter from this month. There's still a copy or two over there on the red uh, cloth on that table, so you can kind of check it out and see what's going on in the First Baptist. Um, you'll also notice another insert in your bulletin, and this is a sermon outline. Pastor John likes to use these, so you can follow along with the sermon, maybe make notes or kind of check out some things. And um, the last thing that I have on my agenda is I don't know if you've noticed, but we have trees. We had seven trees planted this last week, and um, we had three red maples to the north side. We have two heritage oaks and a pin oak to the south side, and a tulip tree on the, uh, in front of the um, offices. It's a Jane, Mag not, um, Jane Magnolia tree is what that one is. And that's all due to Betty Ingledew's memorial. So let's prepare our hearts for worship.
morning, everyone. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you've given us. Lord, I give you praise for who you are and what you have done for us. You are the almighty, all-powerful God, creator of the universe, who loves us and provides spiritual and physical healing. You are a source of hope and strength, Lord. Lord, I ask that you bless this time of worship be with Pastor John and the musicians as they bring your word in, in word and song. Hope us to focus just solely on you this, today, this morning, Lord. Help us to be truly grateful today and this week for what you do for us. And it's in your name I pray. Amen.
is that me? Is that me making that pop when I walked up the steps? Good morning. morning. It is good to see all of you. Thank you for coming to First Baptist, and some of you are uh, visiting. We're glad to have you here. We appreciate you making God's house a priority on your Sunday morning. There's a whole bunch of other stuff you could be doing at 930 on a Sunday morning today, but you choose to be here, so thank you. And I want to thank Sue for stepping in while Claudia is out of town. So thank you, Sue, for playing. And, you know, I, and I'm just throwing this out there because I'm, you know, it's only my second Sunday, so I'm not trying to break a lot of rules. But when she got done playing her, uh, op- to- her prelude, I wanted to clap. I wanted to thank her for a great song, and I also want to do that for Claudia when she does that. So if all of a sudden you hear one person sitting there going, that'll be me. And if you want to join me, that'll be great. But I think it's good that we let people know that we appreciate their talents. There you go. Sue, that's for you. Last week on the screen before the service, you had made an absolutely phenomenal welcome video for Marilee and I. Thank you. I didn't say that last Sunday. I meant to, and it slipped my mind, and I thought, no, I can't forget to do that. So thank you for making that. That was just, I've never had anybody do that before. So that, that's a first, and I appreciate that, and thank you very much. Um, Judy mentioned the insert on this. Here's how this works. I would like you to write down the top five things that you would like to see happen at First Baptist in the next two years. That's it. Whatever comes to your mind, fill this out, take all week, bring it back next Sunday, and drop it in the basket over there. Or give it to me or whatever. You can put your name on it if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. But uh, just that's what that's for. And... What you have here is just a reduced size of the notes I preach from. These are my sermon notes. They'll be in the bulletin every Sunday. You can look at them. You can throw them away. You can do whatever you want with them. But this way, you know exactly where I'm coming from and where I'm going in my sermon. And so if I see all of you with your heads down doing this, well, okay. <laughs> you know, but that's okay. But... I've always done this, I've always, I, and I wanted to continue doing it here, so I appreciate you letting me do that. A couple things on our prayer list before we have a word of prayer. I want to remind all of you that uh, Linda Lamb is having some surgery this Tuesday, and she just needs our prayers, so please be with her. And then I've had a friend in Paris, Illinois, who texted me and said, would you mention a, a gentleman, his first name is Crew." C-R-E-W, Crew Dennison, and he's having a lot of health issues. And I told Greg I would mention him, and we would lift him up in prayer. And you see the rest of the names on your prayer list. Uh, Kay Adair, Kathleen Berry, and Kathy Brooks, who is here this morning. And Kathy, it's good to see you this morning. That's right. That's right. Let her know you're glad she's here. That's cool. Um, and then you see the rest of the names here. We just want to keep all those folks in our prayers. And you all have people you're praying for, family, friends, things you're concerned about, situations that are going on in your life and in the life of your loved ones. And so at this time, let's take a few moments of silent prayer and let you talk to God about those things, and then I'll close us in a word of prayer. So if you would, please, let's all, let's all bow our heads together. I thank you, dear God, for the privilege we have of being in your house this morning. I thank you for the freedom to walk in these doors and to worship you, to worship Jesus, and to be led by your Spirit. I thank you for each and every life that's here. 
I pray for those that couldn't be here because they're traveling or because they're sick. We just ask that you would be with them and watch over them. But dear Lord, I thank you for each family that's here. I pray, Lord, that you would give us all a good Thanksgiving this week. May we all truly enjoy being with family, being with friends. Good. We are adjusting. We are we are adjusting things as we as we go here. We are a fluid church. Remember that we're a fluid church. <laughs> and I forgot to ask God to bless the offering. So, dear God, bless the offering. <laughs> If you want to follow along in your Bible, we're in Job, we're in Psalms, we're in Isaiah, and we're in 1 Thessalonians. You can also follow along on the screen. But right now, we're going to turn to Job chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 9 and 10. 
Then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Then turn to Psalm 100. And it says, shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. In Isaiah 25, we're just going to read one verse. Verse 1 and it says, O Lord, you are my God, I will exalt you, I will give thanks to your name, for you have worked wonders, plans formed long ago with perfect faithfulness. And then all the way over into 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, starting at verse 15, Paul writes, See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and this is our key verse this morning, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer, please. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for the privilege that is mine to bring your word. Thank you for each and every life that's here. Be honored this morning with everything that happens under this roof, dear God. May it all bring glory to you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here this morning to meet the needs inside of each and every person. And we will give you all the praise, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are giving thanks this week. We're supposed to be giving thanks this week. And the Bible says to enter his gates with thanksgiving. That means when you walk through those doors. You are to walk through those doors into his house with thanksgiving in your heart. Not anger, not being mad at each other. Well, let's go to church. Okay, well, let's go to church. Nothing worse than going to church angry, is there? Not not with anger, not with worry. Oh, how are we going to take care of this? What what are we going to do? And not with fear. We are to walk in here with thanksgiving that we have the freedom to walk in here and worship God and worship Jesus and to be led by his Holy Spirit. Paul says in everything, give thanks. Whoa. Everything? Yes. Everything. The good and the bad. And a lot of people say, no way. No way, John. That's why we read Job. Let's review Job real quick. In one day, Job lost 10 children, seven sons and three daughters. They were all killed at the same time. He lost all of his flocks. He lost all of his crops. And his wife, in her grief, looked at him and said, why don't you curse God and die? When he got the news about his children being killed, what did Job say? Do you recall? The Lord gives, the Lord takes away, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, to be able to have that kind of faith to say that when tragedy strikes. And what did he say to his wife when she said, curse God and die? I don't blame her for feeling that way. She just lost 10 children too. But what did Job say? He said, shall we only accept good from God and not accept adversity? Because both come from him. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, We are to give thanks for the good and for the bad because they both come from God. Wait a minute. You mean I got to give God thanks for cancer? Well, who made cancer? Who made cancer? When the first person on the planet came down with cancer, do you think God woke up and said, ooh, I didn't see that coming? No. God made cancer. Why did he make it? I have no idea. But someday we will all understand because when we're in heaven, we will have the mind of Christ 
And a lot of you say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God this and I'm going to ask God that. You won't have to because you will already understand. Many people, many people who have been diagnosed with cancer have led other people to Jesus Christ. They would not have led those people to Jesus Christ if they had not had cancer. So we can thank God for cancer because that cancer helped people come to know Jesus. How about death? Do we thank God when someone dies? We're thankful when a baby's born, but what about when someone dies? Well, who's in charge of life? God is. Who's in charge of death? God is. There's not a baby born without his okay, and none of you will ever leave this earth without his permission. Until he says it's time, you will always be here because God is in charge of all life and all death. Many years ago, I buried a lady named Donna. She was 47 years old. Married, but never had any children. She died of cancer. She had two older brothers. They had not spoken to each other in 20 years. 20 years. Their wives and their kids didn't know each other existed. So they, these kids didn't know they had aunts and uncles and cousins somewhere in the country. Those two brothers stood at Donna's casket and looked at each other and said, Man, we've been really stupid, haven't we? And the other one said, yeah, we have. And from that moment on, those two families came together. But what did it take for those two families to come together? Donna's death. So yes, we have to give God the thanks for something even as sad as death. How about money troubles? More bills than you got money. What do you do? Do you thank him? And you trust him, don't you? You say, dear Lord, what am I going to do? Please help me. You trust him. We lean on God more in lean times, don't we, than we do when, well, I got plenty of money. I can pay all my bills. I don't worry about it. I don't trust God. Sometimes he lets us go through some lean times so that we learn to trust him. What about difficulties? Difficulties at home. Difficulties at work. How about difficulties at school? Our difficulties that we go through, they'll either make us stronger or we'll give up. And that's what a lot of people do, don't they? Please don't do that. If you felt like giving up, please thank God for the difficulty and then ask him to help you find a way through it. But don't ever, ever give up. So we're supposed to give God thanks for everything. That's right, we are. But I'm going to stand up here and tell you it is not easy to do. And if anybody tells you it is, God bless them, they're not being honest. Because it is not easy to give God the thanks. Because human nature thanks God for the good. We're just, we're just, we're just that way. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Oh, the kids are all healthy. Oh, I'm not arguing with my spouse. Not that you argue with your spouse, but you know. Now, okay, spouses look at each other right now and smile. Okay. Good grief. Come on, folks. Everything's going well, and so it's very easy to say, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Everything's going great. Praise the Lord. But let adversity show up. Let death show up. Let money trouble show up, and sometimes that praise disappears. Now, you can either have sunshine faith, or you can have consistent faith. And sunshine faith is just that. When the sun is shining... Everybody's getting along. Everybody's fine. Everything's great. Oh, how I love Jesus because everything's going my way. That's how a lot of people live. But let the sunshine go away. Let the difficulties show up. And what happens? Their faith disappears. This is life. Up and down. Every day, isn't it? Up and down. Does your faith rise and fall with life or is your faith consistent? No matter what happens, good, bad, happy, sad, your faith stays consistent through everything that happens to you. You've got to stay that way. It's not easy, 
but it is worth it. That's what I got to tell you. It is worth it. Selena, I'm going to be happy to say, would you please put my screen up for me? I hope you can read that. You like flow charts? I like flow charts. I like to see how one thing affects another thing and how it affects another thing. As you grow in your faith, you see God's hand working. And one of the words, what I mean is, you'll all of a sudden say, oh, that's why that happened. Oh, that's why that door opened and that door closed. You see God's hand working. As your faith grows, you go, oh, I, I understand that now. And when you see his hand working, you can relax, can't you? You can relax and trust him just a little bit more. You don't have to fix everything. Are you a fixer like me? Well, sometimes there are things we can't fix. We have to trust God that he's going to take care of it. And as we trust him more, we can thank him more for the good and for the bad. So see how that works? You grow in your faith, you see God's hand working. And when you see his hand, you relax and you trust him. And when you trust God more, you can thank him more. Thank you, Selena. This is a process, ladies and gentlemen. It's a process. You don't just jump in at the end. You've got to start at the top and work your way through. This is a process. So this morning, I want to challenge all of us, as individuals and as a church, to start this process. Don't sit there this morning and say, Ooh, John, that's a really nice... That really looks good. Don't do that. It's got nothing to do with me. This has got everything to do with your faith and our faith as a congregation that God is going to take us where we need to go. That's what this is all about. But the process has to start right here inside of all of you. So God bless you. And let me be the first maybe to say a few days early, happy Thanksgiving. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you. We thank you, Lord, and it's not easy to thank you for the bad things, Lord, but we thank you. Because, Lord, we can look back on the bad things that happened to us and realize that a month, a year later, something good came out of it. And it always does, because it's all in your hands. So today we lay our lives in your hands. We lay our faith in in you, we place our faith in you. We place our faith in Jesus Christ. And I thank you again for the privilege that has been ours to be here in your house. Bless us, Lord, as we conclude this service. Bless Sunday school and bless our week. And please keep everyone safe this Thanksgiving. And most of all, Lord, we thank you for giving us Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing an invitation hymn. It's uh, called Have Thine Own Way, Lord. It's a... Oh, nope. Sorry, you're right. I'm wrong. Pass me not. And I apologize for the panic look on your face. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is pass me not. And the invitation, first of all, goes out to anybody who's never invited Jesus Christ as their Savior. You've never said, dear Lord, please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. If that's something that you've never done and you would like to talk about that, then let's, let's get together. You pray that prayer. Whatever else need you might have, if you want to come up here and have a word of prayer with me about it real quick, if that's fine, you say, well, John, I'm not comfortable doing that. That's fine, don't. But whatever God leads you to do this morning, please be obedient to him. As we stand together, please, and as we sing.
I want to thank all of you for being here this morning. God bless you. God bless your Thanksgiving. Let's keep each other in our prayers. That's what it's all about. That's what a church family does. Somebody's not feeling good, we pray for them. Somebody just got some great news, we rejoice with them. That's what it's all about, is all of us just lifting each other up and keeping us together. So God bless you, keep you, and I think I always forget this. I'm supposed to close in a word of prayer. Yeah, well, I guess I can do that. They say I'm a preacher. I'm supposed to be able to pray on, on, on demand, right? Sorry. I'm used, to con- I'm used to concluding the service by simply dismissing you in the name of Jesus. So here's what I'm going to do. Everybody bow your heads with me. Dear God, take us safe from here. Keep us safe this week. Give us a great Thanksgiving. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we say amen. And we are dismissed. Bingo. Thank you.